And we're back after a quick little bug splat. Uh, it appears that one of NC State's uh, computers died there, ADC Robert. And so, just going to be going through the same pick and bands that we had before, uh, back up to that point where we had the lock of the Twisted Fate, which uh, probably was an accident. And so, um, I think that was the auto lock in as uh, with. The custom game lobbies, if you don't pick anything, it selects a random champion for you from your champion pool. So see what they pick instead. Just running through these bands pretty quickly. Picks as well. Tyson Trumnell picked up again there for NCU. So, uh, just looking at these initial few picks, I definitely think NC State has the the more powerful, you know, uh, characters in the meta right now. So what do you think uh, Auburn should pick in order to, you know, try and counteract everything that's going on and the strong picks that they have so far? Well, currently with that Lulu, Zaya, and Cassiopeia for Auburn, they do have a pretty insane late game if they can keep their carry safe. So it's really going to be on Commissioner and that Lulu pick to give them the peel they need to succeed. Because if it does end up going into the late game, I think they could easily match and CS. They're definitely going to need some more beef, and so uh, what are some what are some good top laners and junglers you think right now that can definitely provide that uh, the tankiness that Auburn's going to need. Zach still available. Olaf strong in the jungle as well. Still left up. They banned away the cane, so I don't think that was necessarily the right ban with some of those other ones still left up. We'll have to see what I'm just joshing wants to play, but still a lot of options for him. Top lane still has plenty of tanks as well. Scion not been banned away by anyone, which is pretty surprising. Uh, but even. You know, looking even newer, the new Aurelia. That could definitely be something that can be brought in to help. Is that available for this tournament? Yes, that is. Uh, okay. It's a, new characters and champion reworks are available one week after they're released. And so, you know, she came out last Tuesday. We're ready to rock and roll with her this afternoon. So we'll have to see if Pop Tart or Whoppers has put in the work on her. Brom going to be picked up for Twitch TV Cyber. Orn gonna be the hover right there. And Orn is, is it's definitely a strong pick. His his kit just provides so much utility and it's I, I love the champion design. I just love what they've done with him. And they're going with the blitz crank. Ooh, this could be interesting. Try and get the combo of the pool into the uh, the Cassiopeia Miasma. Make sure they can't flash out and you know if they can get that, that's basically a secured kill. I imagine it was a troll pick there. They already had the Lulu, but would have been nice to think about. We've seen some tag speed Lulus here and there. I, they they got me good. I'll tell you what, they got me good. I was all excited for the Blitz Crank. We saw that yesterday night. I'm like, man, this is gonna be good. But hey, Rengar, they can definitely do some some exciting plays with him. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, but that's going to be based on I'm just Joshing's performance. If he's able to get ahead on Rangar, I think he can definitely make the pick work. It's just that uh, Pluck and Penguin on Trundle, I think, has a lower baseline of effectiveness without having to put in as much work to achieve that. And uh, not not necessarily not as much work, but definitely he'll be able to t take less risky options and still come out ahead. You know, because when you're playing that Rengar, you're going to need to be uh, doing some funky things. And so it appears that uh, they they flexed some of their characters, So, or sorry, their, some of their champions. They have teched their mid laner into the jungle and uh, moved things a little bit around, so that's perfectly fine. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this works out for them. Yeah, might just be in the wrong order. I'm not sure. I know I'm just joshing. It's typically the top lane. Um, we are going to go into the spectator delay here, so we get a little bit of a chance to talk about the matchups, however. I'm going to start up in that top lane. we got Scion against Orn. What are your thoughts on that? So, Scion definitely has a lot of the poke, especially if he's taking Comet. It's it's so easy 
to just land that comet and get so much damage off of him. But, you know, Orn, with just the way that his kit works, you know, if ever he gets low, just, you know, buy a ruby crystal, boom, he gets some health. And so, uh, it's, I, I say it's, that top lane's going to be pretty even. It's mainly going to be dependent upon what jungler is, uh, you know, focusing the top side more. But, you know, in a, in a straight 1v1, I'd probably give that to Cyan, at least for the beginning. What about you? Yeah, I'd agree there. The Scion just has such huge early laning pressure. Able to knock people down pretty easily with that Roar of the Slayer. In the jungle, we do have the Rengar versus Trundle. This one might be a little bit more Trundle favored, but what can Kark do to turn that in his favor? So, getting those early ganks off on the immobile champions of uh, NC State is going to be important. And so, Scion, he doesn't really have any built-in escapes. Uh, Corky obviously does, but if the Cassiopeia is able to land down a nice Miasma, won't let him escape at all, you know, it's he's going to need to target those uh, the champions without any escape and the ones that are squishier. Yeah, that bot lane might be a nice target as well. Kaisa with that low range and no mobility early. Might be a juicy target for Kark to get onto. Grab a couple kills down there. In the mid lane, we do have that Corky versus Cassiopeia. What are your thoughts on that one? I think that that lane is just going to, quite frankly, be a farm fest. Neither of those characters are looking to fight. At, definitely not before level 6. But, uh... <clears throat> It's definitely, they're just going to be, you know, getting their tier, stacking their tier for Cassiopeia, and then just trying to get that Trinity Force as possible, and then making their way around the map to try and get uh, pressure applied in other places and get other lanes ahead. Yeah, that's when we'll have to keep track of Dexamus when he picks up his first package. We'll have to see how he uses it. In the bot lane, it is going to be Zaya Lulu versus Kaisa Brahm. Can't help but feel like Kaisa is a bit of a disadvantage here. It's it'll be interesting to see how this bot lane plays out, and so the Lulu is definitely going to be able to provide a a lot more utility than the Brom will be able to. Uh, you know, with her polymorph, with her shields, and you know, just uh, additionally her slows. And so, uh, in Zaya, she has that great range. She has that great wave clear. She'll be able to push them under tower, uh, and so. I believe that in order to crack that that freeze that they're inevitably going to push, you're you're we're excuse me, we're going to see a lot of Trundle in the bot lane trying to help out their their laners. All right. Well, we are just going to be loading into game here. Be in shortly. Let us know who you think is going to win in the chat. NCS or Auburn. Hoping both teams can make a good series of this. It's always unfortunate when you see one team thump the finals. It definitely seems to be pretty even. Some nice skins coming out. You know, the traditional trundle. Always gotta love the kickback. Yeah, skins aside, I'm just er, sorry. I'm seeing some interesting room choices. Whopper's got that glacial augment on his scion. Glacial Augment, that's something you don't see all too often nowadays, or really any day, <laughs> even in the past. Uh, aside from uh, Tom Kench, you know, it's uh, rare you see that. So what what do you think his strategy is by, by picking that? Okay. I imagine he'll be trying to land the Roar of the Slayer, and then following that up with an auto attack to keep him slowed extra, to be able to easily land his... Um, Decimating smash from there. Press the attack as well for Robert Cern's Kaisa. It's a questionable one. Ooh, pause. Support DC'd. Uh oh. That's not a good one. <laughs> Aurelian Soul Starbug. <laughs> you never know when that's going to creep in and, you know, ruin the day. But, <clears throat> so, while, uh,. While we're waiting for that support to jump back in here, uh, let's just look at the map right now. And so it looks like Auburn's going for much more of a you know traditional defensive uh, cover all your bases. While NC States, they t they're grouped as a, excuse me, they're grouped up as a team and they're ready to go invade that red and try and put that Rengar behind as quickly as possible. 
Yeah, Rengar is sitting in the bush, so should hopefully be able to spot it out. Might be in a risky position. Brom, fantastic level 1. Trundle as well, pretty good effective level 1 fighting ability. So now we're back in it. They're just gonna set themselves up there, waddle their way over. Excuse me, gonna get pinged out by the that early ward that uh, they, were, they were able to place down, I believe it was the Rengar, and so we'll have to see what Auburn does to adjust to it. They're not really making any advances over to uh, NC State's red buff in response, and so it looks like plan thwarted, everyone back to going as normal. They do get some vision on it, so they're going to be able to see Rengar wherever he's starting. It looks like he might actually be starting the Raptors and then heading over to his red buff. Trundle as well going to be starting his red buff on the top side, so we might see an early gank down bot for him. Having to take it with the stream for a hot second, so bear with me. No worries. Junglers just starting their buffs, nothing too crazy going on. Rengar did opt for the red buff start versus the Raptors. Pluck and Penguin is going for his Raptor second. Maybe a little bit lower health than you'd normally expect as he's getting that camp early on. His bite does come on to Commissioner. Let me drop him to about half health. Meaning Spanish landing in the top lane as well. Alright, and we're we're back to it. And hey, looking at that top lane, that Orn is definitely getting the the favorable early game trades. And so uh, not something we quite expected, but that Scion is not running the comet, which we were speculating he would be, and so. His, his early game trades are a little, little uh, subpar. Yeah, nice trades from I'm just joshing as well. Landing the Bellows Breath and getting the auto attacks off. Able to knock him out of his Decimating Smash as well. Using that new Brittle effect. Yeah, and Soul Furnace not available for him either, so he's not able to really negate the damage quite yet. Uh, did you just get a bunch of lag? Uh, I did not, but let's just speed up the uh, the client here and make sure we're all at the same page. So I'm at 316 right now. All right, 320. I, well. I believe I was like cool. three, three or four seconds behind you there. Excellent. Would have been weird to cast the team fights from the past. So everyone just seems to be uh, just doing the normal trades. The junglers are. Not going, actually looking into the mid lane. We have Trundle coming in. Does land the pillar onto Pop Tart, has popped the ghost, is trying to get away. Pop Tart gets some move speed from his phase rush and just slithers away. Looks like they're just going to, you know, take the summoner spell, you know. Uh, Cassiopeia is very immobile, and, and whenever you can, can get one of those things popped, you're sure to come back for a return gank in the near future. Does have the flash still, so we're gonna have to see a really nice pillar from Pluck and Penguin. Corky currently at a CS deficit in that mid lane, actually. Popped up pretty low on mana, however. Which is interesting to see. Uh, the Corky does not have, you know, that, that much long range, but uh, Cassiopeia needs to be very cognizant of her early game mana usage because she is so, you know, mana dependent for everything she does. And the bot lane just having some additional farming up going on down here. Uh, pretty square. Uh, Kai size up a couple CS, you know, but it's to be expected in those early, early trades. Yeah, and that's kind of surprising to see that Kai's is up in CS actually. This is a matchup you'd expect her to be struggling in. The range support from Lulu and Zaya's really strong early lane trading. 
Brom seems to be doing an excellent job with his positioning to try and force them back and, you know, allowing that Kaisai to utilize, or not really utilize, but overcome the short range that she does have to, to get that little bit of a lead she has currently. Nice little dash on the top lane there from just joshing, avoid some of Whopper's damage. Both top laners have built some items. Whopper's had recalled for it though, so he is still holding on to his TP. And already trying to establish that uh, the vision war in the river, uh, Trundle's able to take out that uh, the pink ward as he goes around just clearing his camps as we're having a pretty pretty standard start so far. But now he's up on this top side. Isn't level six yet, but he's pathing towards Whoppers. It'll be pretty tricky for them to get a you know a successful tower dive going on with this. Uh, Scion is six now, but that means just Joshin will be right behind him, and so uh, you know that call of the Forge God can do a lot of a lot of knock up and you know just really stop any engager happening. But here we go. Eric Hark is up here, gonna force the flash from the Scion, does actually flash in front of it to stop the unstoppable onslaught. Kark going back in, that's gonna be first blood handed over to him, just joshing, nicely played by both of them. That was just nothing but clean, you know, they were, uh, Kark was able to flash in front of the ulting Scion, able to stop him in his tracks and once that happened, you know, he already used his flash to earlier to, to get in range to use his ultimate to escape and uh, picked up the kill. Yeah, neither of them level 6 either, so they both have ultimate still as they've just hit it now. So Kart can still make a pretty effective gank to another lane. As we have a Trundle in the bot lane, just getting more vision, not looking to do any engages right now on this bot side. Is an Infernal Drake first up, so we might see some fights happen around that pretty soon. Robert Cern just still trying to farm up, up to a 10 CS lead now at this point. The next pack, or the first package rather, is going to become available soon as well for Dextamus. That's at 10 minutes, I believe? Or is it any bit sooner? Well, I think it's at 10 minutes as well. When it does happen, I'm, sh I'm sure I'm sure we'll hear the, the foghorn. So and just... Dextamus is going to have to make good use of it as well. Just going even with these lanes really isn't going to cut it for them with how strong Cassiopeia and Zaya will be in the late game. You're absolutely right. Uh, NC State's going to have to be looking to start forcing you know, some more action happening around the map. Try and get some of these fights going because they're going to need to make sure this Cassia doesn't scale up. I'm just joshing on Whoppers. A little wet noodle fight up there. I'm just joshing as well. Has taken the grasp of the Undying. I don't think we can see how many procs he's gotten. No, unfortunately not. He's been laying down the autos pretty frequently on a Whopper, so we can only imagine he's gotten a, quite a bit of health from it. And looking at the CS differential, it seems uh, pretty split across the board. Uh, no one team is really dominating every single lane, you know. You have Whopper with his CS advantage on the top side, but, you know, Jungle, it goes over to Kark and Auburn. So it definitely should be an interesting fight as we come into this mid, or the top lane. Just using some ultimates, ultimate. but Whopper. the Forge God. Just gonna chase down Whopper as he gets away. They're gonna trade Infernal Dragon for this as well. That's 100% a win for NC State. They got out Scott Free in the top lane and managed to secure one of the more valuable Drakes. And so there's the package, actually, it looks like. So it must have come up at 9 minutes or so. He they just use used that to escape. Direction from Deximus. They do secure that Infernal Drake, however. Going to be good deterrent to the late game of Auburn. Absolutely. Giving that blue buff over to the Corky. 
maybe he can start farming a little bit with his ultimate, you know, ultimate shots. That way he can catch up and CS with this Cassiopeia, who's amassed, you know, a little bit, uh, almost approaching 10 CS now, which can, you know, be the difference between going back and completing an item versus, you know, having to settle for a part of it. Yeah, and that gank up in the top lane from Kark there, I think was a little questionable. Uh, they'd already visited it once, but snowballing your Orn isn't really going to be your win condition. You're absolutely right about that, and it, it does bait the question why they keep keep approaching that top side. Uh, Whopper does keep pushing, but Scion is so tricky to kill, and even when you do, you know, his passive, you always got to be careful about that, and you forget. But in the bot side, we have a four-man gank coming down here. They don't know it yet, but Trundle is here. They're going to use the Killer Instinct to get in. Polymorph going to try and keep him alive. He is going to get a huge Blade Collar off, but nobody's going to drop quite yet. Only Commissioner falling. Ghost is popped by Pop-Tart. Just going to be trading some damage back. Just so we're on the same page, make sure you uh, speed up every once in a while. Oh yeah, that's my bad. It's all good. So right now we're at 11:30 with uh, looking in the into the bot lane. Nothing all too serious happened because of that engage. Looked like we got a kill over to the Kai side, but for a four-man gank, you know it was pretty pretty successfully negated by Auburn. No towers taken, no substantial tower damage, uh, and only the loss of the support. It looks like Robert Cern is actually building straight for the Gwinzu's Rageblade, not even going to go for the Death Stance first. Wants that additional attack speed and on-hit damage. That's interesting to see. Uh, you usually want to try and get that uh, your Q upgrade as quickly as possible, but fight's happening in the jungle. Kark, dropping fucking Penguin super low, is actually going to get the kill even though the flash came out from him. That is what Kark is going to be looking for. Same with Auburn, trying to get him ahead, and you know, you know, get that that Rango as fed as possible. That way, he can be running around being a terror to both of the eighty carries that Auburn is supporting right now. Yeah, and he's currently skipping his jungle item, just sitting on that hunter's machete. Get himself some Moby boots and some lethality with that serrated dirk. So he's going to be looking to make some plays. Going right into a death, not death dance. Is that the dusk blade? Dusk blade. There we go. That's what he's probably going to be going for, as it synergizes so well with everything Rengar's trying to do. The assassination, going invisible, all that fun stuff. And meanwhile, on the bottom lane here, actually evened out in CS now, but Behold's up, catching back up. Trundle is in the top lane. They are going to use the unstoppable onslaught. I'm just shot. Trying to get away is gonna flash. Kark is here, but he's caught out on the other side of the pillar. Can't really get away. He's gonna have to flash. Gonna pop the blast going and make his way out. A little bit of a skirmish, but no one's truly worse for wear. Uh, Rangar, excuse me, Rangar, and uh, just Josh, and both did have to pop flash, but they did not lose their lives. But they will lose this top turret. I, if I'm looking at this correctly. That is first tower gold, and so. That's going to definitely give them a good bit of change to go back to base with and, you know, help out uh, building their next items. A 1600 recall for Scion, that's going to be pretty big for him, and I believe he's going to pick up a banner of command first. And it is. He's going to be looking to be that, uh, that splish put, excuse me, split push top lane. Just going to be causing trouble for Auburn. So I imagine they're going to be looking to pressure bot side while they have the top pushing. And so we have Cassiopeia roaming bot lane, but as soon as she realizes that NC State's onto her, she walks back up the river, or slithers back up the river, being more accurate. And the cheap components for the tank items in the top lane as well. Whopper is actually just about done two items now, whereas I'm just joshing going for that Iceborne Gauntlet first only has the components to his first item. He's gonna be having a difficult time up here now. I believe the next package should be coming up soon for Corky. 
to see if he does go back for that soon. So the Rengar has just completed his Dusk Blade, so he's gonna be he's gonna be looking for some fights. Uh, probably gonna you know also he's coming out with that pink ward, the control ward, get some vision working on catching people out. And while they have just Josh and worrying about that uh, banner commanded minion, looks like they're setting up for this dragon, which has just spawned now. Yeah, and we did see Corky recall for that package, so he has it currently. If they're gonna look for a fight, now's the time. As they're bursting this down very quickly. All that damage that they have from the two ADCs, they managed to get it without really anything happening in return. It took just Josh and that entire time to kill that uh, Banner of Commanded minion, so it'll be interesting to see what the next steps for them are. Yeah, didn't have TP available until just now either, so I had to walk down. Scion making his way down as well. Whoppers holding on to his. Robert Cern currently sitting on 1800, just about 1900 gold. So his next recall is going to be pretty big for him as well. And as he goes back to do it now, you know, she, uh, Kaisa is definitely one of the characters that benefits extremely well from a few couple items, as we were mentioning, a champion select. And does decide to go for the Rage Blade. That is completed. The recurve bow is still there, so I assume. Robert's going to be going for a Bork with that. A little bit different than some of the other builds we're seeing from Kaisa. And I guess only the late game will decide if that's the right choice or not, as we haven't really seen all too many fights with them in the bot side. Do they did pick up the one kill onto the Lulu, but it's been it's been pretty tame in the bot lane. But as you said, it has been an interesting story that the Kaisa has been farming so well, given her. Uh, you know, suboptimal range. And I imagine with this build, she's looking for that ultimate late game potential. There's not a lot of tanks to actually shred on the other side, so I think it's kind of questionable that she'd go for sort of an on hit style build rather than a crit focus one, which is good against the squishier champions of Auburn. Lane. Still a little bit of a CS advantage here for Pop Tart. Oh, the unstoppable onslaught in the bottom lane. Commissioner gonna avoid it. Everybody getting away. Kark is here. Chooses to show himself now. Jumping onto Robert Cern. Gonna be dropping extremely low. Commissioner first of all. Kark gonna have to try and get away, but he's actually gonna drop. Featherstorm out. Blade Color isn't quite up yet. Is gonna use it. Roots up three under the tower. Cassiopeia here as well. Laying the damage down, and they're gonna be routing. NCS as they try and chase them away. Whoppers and Dexam is the only ones left alive. Wow, that was quite the turnaround. It looked like that was just going to be NC State all over it. They had the nice engage with the Scion, but things just turned around when that uh, Zaya was able to get a three-person route using her recall of the feathers. Uh, combo that into the Miasma from the Cassiopeia and the stun. They were just laying out the damage and managed to pick that up to uh, it'd be quite, you know, pretty even trade across the board. Yeah, really great timing from Pop-Tart to arrive. If he'd been just a tiny bit later, I think he would have seen a couple more kills for North Carolina. Arriving just in time to give Auburn the advantage there. And this recall is going to be a big one for both him and Bubba Hotel. As things calm down for just a little bit. Actually, we have Kart taking some of the jungle camps away from Pluck and Penguin. Not going to be able to do anything about it. You know, the bot side. Was, excuse me. We still have the, the War of the Wards trying to clear as much as they can. Yeah, and Robert Cern going really deep in that last fight you saw. He used the killer instinct to get in and pretty much instantly popped by Kark. Just dropping him so low. We're gonna have to see if he can make even better use of his ultimate in the next fight. As he was also dropped in return for that damage. And so that was one of the things we were talking about in Champ Select. Uh, we we're a little bit surprised by the Rengar pick, but you know they do have two very squishy champions in the Kaisai and in the Corky and. If he's able to get these assassinations off and doing as much damage as he needs to be as an assassin-type character, 
you know, this, it could be a pretty hard to stop on the side of NC State. Certainly could be. Looks like Robert has actually sold that recurve bow that he previously had and has picked up a zeal instead. Might be going for a Runan's Hurricane. Does recurve bow no longer build into Runan's? No, they changed that quite a while ago. Fight in the spot lane, Bubba Hotep gonna lock up Cyber. Uses the Feather Storm, doesn't have the Blade Collar available yet. Is exhausted, but is gonna root up Cyber again. Just trading back and forth. Bubba Hotep, no ultimate available. Deximus gonna go on top of him, and the Killer Instinct as well. Gonna drop to Deximus, Commissioner. Extremely low. Rengar going in. Kark absolutely demolishing Deximus. Pop-Tart gonna use the ultimate to lock two up and pick up a double kill for himself. Wow, that was that was quite the fight. This Cassiopeia has been paying out for them just non-stop with great miasmas, great ultimates, and just shredding the entire team of NC State. But in the top lane, we have the Scion almost taking out this Orn. Orn able to flash away, but is it going to be enough? Kark is able to help him out a little bit, but still might be able to get to just Josh. But sure enough, Kark... Able to, with the empowered Q, take him out, slow him down enough so that Joshin doesn't get killed by the passive. They go on their merry way. Speed up there for some reason. I don't know what was wrong with that. I couldn't catch up. Yeah, so hopefully we're all synced up now. It's about to hit 22 for me, and we're there now. So the Cassiopeia procking your face rush, able to get a ton of damage off onto the Corky. Diving underneath the tower... Using the ghost might be able to catch up to him, but Trundle's there for the support. And now Cassiopeia got a little bit too greedy. She's completely caught out of position. The Kaisai is able to chase her down, but the double, oh my goodness. Uh, the double snare by the Cassiopeia should allow her to get out pretty easily. Providing the support as well. Nicely played by Pop-Tart to make it out of there. Are you able to pause at uh, 2240? 22.40 paused. Alright, and uh, I'm paused there now. You just give us a countdown. Uh, 3, 2, 1. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, just had I to. I find it uh, works better if you do that instead. For some reason, Riot really doesn't like when you try and view as live as possible. Well, hey, this works for me. And so this bot side is getting sieged down. Uh, Auburn trying to get their uh, second turret of the game, excuse me, third turret of the game. And it looks like NC State's just going to have to concede that over to them. It's not much they can do to prevent this from going down. And as you as you correctly assumed, uh, uh, Robert did take that zeal and turn it into a Renan's Hurricane, try and get as many of those passive procs off as possible. Yeah, and that bot lane turret lost even though they have the item advantage there, so kind of unfortunate for them. In the lane, just going to be farming it out, clearing the waves. Pretty good CS on the side of both teams, both mid lanes and ADCs at just about 10 CS per minute. All right, everything seems to be calmed down a little bit. Dragon is up, uh, but they are looking to siege this mid turret as they seem to have caught Auburn with their pants down. No one was really there to defend it, even though it was pretty low. And they are going to be trying to find Commissioner as well, but instead they're going to fall back to this dragon. Could potentially be a five on five fight. Everybody is here, but Auburn has the fast track on the mid lane here. They're going to be shoving this wave in. I actually, it looks like they did a little bit of bait and switch here as they're going for the dragon. Uh, NC State seemed overcommit for that mid tower and just easily conceded away the dragon without getting much in return. 
they do seem to be gravitating towards that Baron side, but they must just be getting that red buff and pushing out top wave or trying to make a move somewhere else. And they could try and go for it, but still not a crazy amount of damage to it yet. Kaisa just sitting on two items right now. Ooh, Kark getting sped up, gonna use the ultimate, does get knocked back by the pillar. Still gonna be looking for somebody. He's in pretty deep on his own, however. It's just gonna decide to not try and make any flashy plays, no 2v1s, and just shove out mid lane as they are. Uh, so they are gravitating around Baron, so they are trying to go to go for this at 20, 25 and a half minutes here. They're going for very early Baron, but the Cassiopeia is just destroying this Baron. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious. Nicely played by them on the recall from NCS. They just instantly turn on to the Baron and Kark with a nice zone means that they're able to secure it for free. They took that down in, what was that, less than 30 seconds. Goodness gracious. Just show, goes to show how much that Cassiopeia can truly deal. She has a fully stacked uh, Rod of Ages and a fully stacked Seros Embrace. And so she is laying down the Hurt Pop-Tart. Going at it. Yeah, and the next team fights here are going to be important. Deximus might have found Kark. Does use the package to try and get close. Commissioner is on the way to try and save Kark, however. Does jump back onto Deximus, and he's going to be sped away by Commissioner, so he's going to make it out safely. So NC State's going to have to be very careful at this, uh, you know, around this time. Auburn's gonna have a ton of lane pressure from all this Baron minions. And so it looks like they're trying to gravitate towards the mid lane to get a little bit of pressure and open up that base just a little bit more. And nice wave clear from Robert Cern and Dextimus, however. I'm just joshing. Joshing is pushing this bottom lane. So maybe we'll see them rotate over. Got a solid 1-3-1 one, one going on here. They, uh, I'm just Josh, and he's going to be pretty hard to kill. He's a very tanky boy right now. Uh, and, you know, you got the Rengar on the top side. Yo Moose just sitting on a BF sword and a Dusk Blade. He's also going to be incredibly challenging to take out. And so they're going to be able to do a number to these towers here. It looks like NC State is trying to engage, but... He uses the Feather Storm to keep safe, and they are getting a top lane tower in the meantime. This mid lane tower is extremely low as well, and this is just Commissioner and Baba Hotep in the mid lane challenging them. Pop Tart trying to find something. We won't actually get it. Does pop the ghost. So they head back just to get some more health, finish off any items. And here we nice go with the Rangar back in the bot lane. Just trying to knock down all these remaining outer towers. Whoppers does use the Righteous Glories. They might be looking for a fight here. Bubba Hotep gets knocked up by the pillar. Scion is going to be missing his unstoppable onslaught. And Bubba Hotep just firing away, putting the hurt onto Whoppers. He's going to be picking up the kill onto him. And Fluckin' Penguin extremely low as well. Going to have to flash away. Kark is there to receive him, though. Picks up a double kill for himself. And flashing by Pop-Tart doesn't get... Petrifying gaze, unfortunately. That seemed, uh, NC State just seemed to be a little bit too hasty to fight. Uh, they didn't get the proper engage that they wanted to, and as such, Pop Tart and Baba Hotep were able to just lay out the pain. Able to shred their tanks, and you know, when you got no tanks and you have two ADCs, it's pretty hard to keep them alive so that they can, you know, do the damage they need to. Yeah does mean that they're able to pick up two inhibitors as well so the hasty fight from north carolina state might end up costing them the game as that's a huge advantage now for auburn for kark leaves just to add a little insult to injury steal some of the camps away from him uh before he goes over and starts uh buying his next items Let's take a look yeah, at... He's going to be buying a lot of them, actually. He's sitting on 4k gold right now. Goodness gracious. And the Lulu also sitting at that 2.3k. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh what Rangar goes back and picks up. Because, as, as, yeah, just 4k gold. That's a lot of gold. 
Yeah, almost 4.2k as he's finishing his recall here. So at least gonna be able to upgrade that BF sword into the Infinity Edge. Selling his Hunter's Machete as well. Doesn't need it anymore. He says, I want the Static Shiv. I want to one-shot somebody. Man, he is going to be a scary little kitty in the jungle over here now. Uh, none of them, I don't see all too many uh, pink wards pushed up into the jungle of NC State. That might be something that they're going to be pushing to do on their next back. That way they can get those catches uh, and really capitalize off of the Rengar's assassination ability. Kark has actually used his ultimate, so looking for somebody here. Does last a little while now that he's got a couple ranks in it. Does end up running out without him finding anybody, so we're going to have to see how long it takes before that's back up. Just trading a, trading a couple little blows here and there. Uh, no one's really looking to engage right now. As I say that... Is Sion as well gonna miss the unstoppable onslaught? Pop Tart just trying to run away. Does have the ghost available, but no flash. Gonna get knocked up, and the killer instinct onto him from Robert Cern. Gonna pick up that one kill. Bubba Hotep on the other side. Locked up by the pillar, but gonna be picking up two kills here, most likely. Fucking Penguin's extremely low. The Feather Storm out. Pulls the blade collar in, getting three kills. That's a double kill for Bubba Hotep, picking up the triple. The Quadra currently denied, but might be getting it here on Whoppers. Actually going to be going over to Kark, so almost the penta for Bubba Hotep. Now that's a lot of damage. Goodness gracious. The NC State, they again, they tried to engage. Uh, they overcommitted for uh, Pop-Tart. They missed the ultimate from the Scion. They missed the ultimate from the Braum. And it just left, uh, you know, Auburn's ADC to just deal out all the damage. Since they were in those jungles with those narrow corridors, just throwing the feathers through all the champions, dealing a ton of damage. Props to Auburn for that fight. Yeah, Bubba Hotep and Commissioner keeping themselves safe, and Bubba Hotep just firing away. Gets the Feather Storm out and pulls it back through three people, decimating them. Absolutely. And with that, Auburn takes game one. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Take a brief intermission. Probably switch some sides here. And uh, coming up next, you may not hear me. We might be bringing on a new caster, but stay tuned for the next one.